By now, most people are familiar with metal music's stereotypical thematic tropes, the land where Satan, religious blasphemy, and nonsensical gore run free. However, delving past the surface to look at how more specific themes are discussed by groups of bands can often tell us a lot more about the genre. Such is the case with Countess Elizabeth Bathory and her important place in the development of metal music. Born in 1560, the so-called Blood Countess would be reportedly responsible for the murder of up to 650 women and young girls, making her one of the first ever female serial killers. Among other heinous acts, Countess Bathory is known for bathing in the blood of virgin girls with the hopes of attaining eternal youth. It's no surprise that early extreme metal acts ran wild with this one, using the legend to push the genre to more extreme lengths. In 1982, the raucous English group Venom released their black metal record with one of the album's most popular songs named after Countess Bathory. Two years later, the Swedish extreme metal act Bathory, of course named after the Countess, released their influential debut. Both albums would arguably be the most extreme records of their respective years, marking them as two of the most popular and influential releases in metal music to date. However, the uncanny similarity between both records, like the uniform album covers, both albums worshipping Elizabeth Bathory, and near-identical lyrics would quickly spark controversy. Here's the story of Countess Bathory and her place in the development of metal music, and the controversy between two groups who worshipped her name. The first band to popularize Countess Elizabeth Bathory within the world of music was Venom, hailing from Newcastle, England. Debuting in 1981 with the appropriately titled Welcome to Hell, they were one of the genre's first bands to exploit shocking themes like Satanism and witchcraft to cause a public stir. Boasting song titles like In League with Satan and Witching Hour, the group's raucous, bulldozer-like sound would quickly distinguish them from contemporary metal acts like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. However, it wasn't until their 1982 sophomore release Black Metal that Venom would become famous for worshipping the sadistic Blood Countess. Founding lead singer and bassist Kronos recalls reading books about Satanism and the occult in a local library in the 1970s. It was here that he would come across Elizabeth Bathory's legend. Kronos would have read about the Hungarian noblewoman who was part of the wealthy and noble Bathory family. The Bathory line was one of the most well-known in the surrounding area, holding a large part of Hungary's wealth and including members like Stephen Bathory, the King of Poland. Born in 1560, Elizabeth Bathory would suffer from chronic seizures, which were most likely the result of noble inbreeding. To help with her seizures, it's reported that the blood of a non-epileptic was rubbed on the Countess's lips, a sort of old-age remedy. This moment would have sparked the legend of Elizabeth Bathory's insatiable desire for pure virgin blood. The Countess would go on to marry Count Ferenc Nadasdi, the captain of Hungary's army, leading them in an ongoing war against the Ottoman Empire. Nadasdi reportedly shared Bathory's sadistic tendencies, him being nicknamed the Black Knight of Hungary, growing a reputation for his cruel and torturous treatment of war prisoners. Bathory's wedding gift was her husband's household, the castle of Chastice, where the couple would live until their final days. Around this time, the Count and Countess would grow a desire for beating and torturing their servants behind the Chastice castle walls. Although Bathory's husband would mostly be away at war, the Countess would continue this behavior, luring young peasant girls to her castle, advertising servant jobs. Aided by a handful of accomplices, Bathory would go on to torture countless women, reportedly burning and mutilating their hands, biting flesh off living victims, and pricking them with needles. However, the legend's most infamous claim is that the Countess would bathe in pools of virgin blood to rejuvenate her skin and preserve her youth. Naturally, this is the most alluring factor for those who become fascinated with the tale. Although Bathory's legend dated back hundreds of years, her name was now being screamed out in thrilling anguish as part of a metal band's own desire to turn heads. Alongside other blasphemous tracks like Black Metal, Don't Burn the Witch, and To Hell and Back, Venom's sophomore cut solidified the group as the kings of black satanic speed metal during the early 1980s. Of course, the Countess Bathory track helped to flesh out the record, adding some sinister, real-life flair to otherwise fictional lyrics about Satanism. The song ultimately successfully brings the Bathory legend into the world of music, even filling listeners in on the Countess's demise. He 
Here, Kronos describes how Countess Bathory lived the final years of her life confined to the walls of her very own castle. As the Countess is alleged to have murdered up to 650 women and girls, it's no surprise that local townsfolk started to cause an uproar. In 1610, a private investigation was started in response to the rumors. After collecting over 300 witness statements, the evidence was brought to court where an agreement was held. Given that the Countess was part of an incredibly well-known noble family, her trial would not be made public, so as to not tarnish the family name. And thus, the Countess's family and the local court agreed that Elizabeth Bathory would be placed under house arrest for the rest of her life, poetically confined to her own castle walls, just like her victims. She lived this way for a handful of years, dying mysteriously in her sleep in 1614. Here, the eponymous Venom track puts an interesting spin on her death, arguing that her mysterious passing was caused by her new inability to soak in fresh virgin blood, saying, Living in her self-styled hell, the Countess dressed in black, life so distant, death so near, no blood to turn time back. The song Countess Bathory on the album it's on, Black Metal, would go on to massively influence the rapidly developing extreme metal scene, even coining the term for one of metal music's most extreme subgenres. But even though Venom coined the term black metal, they never ended up pushing the extremity of their sound far enough to release an album that sonically represented what we now call the black metal subgenre, notorious for its abrasive sound, murderous band member feuds, and church burnings in the early 1990s. It was only fitting that another Blood Countess-inspired band would release the first proper black metal record, at least sonically speaking. In 1984, the Swedish group Bathory released their infamous self-titled debut. Although the band had other members shortly after formation, it's essentially a studio project led by principal songwriter and musician Thomas Forsberg, stage named Corthon. Another stepping stone in the progression of extreme metal music, the record successfully cranks Venom's blasphemous sonic statements a notch further with more abrasive guitar tones, faster drumming, and properly evil vocals. The band name also arguably takes the extremity factor up a notch from Venom's, with Corthon naming the project after the murderous Blood Countess. The frontman recalls visiting the London Dungeon Wax Museum of Horror in the early 80s, which had a display dedicated to the legend of Elizabeth Bathory. Here, Corthon would see recreations of her murders using naked wax bodies on display, hanging upside down from chains and their blood draining into large metal tubs. The frontman would then return home with these barbaric scenes ingrained in his mind, forever remembering the name of the woman responsible for these crimes. After looking the Blood Countess up, some more serious reading into the subject followed, the frontman recalled about the origins of the band name. Her life story being as close to a Bathory lyric as can be, the name was of course perfect for the band. The name Bathory was short, easy to remember, and reflected the dark content of the lyrics written even at that early stage. However, unfortunately for the young musician, both Kronos and Corthon's fascination with Countess Bathory would help to spark the first band beef in black metal history. It wasn't long before fans started pointing out the many uncanny similarities between Venom's black metal record and Bathory's debut, calling Bathory a Venom clone, essentially delegitimizing the band's influential spot in metal music history. Keep in mind, these records were really the first of their kind, establishing a sound that was unprecedented in the world of music. Let's take a step back and compare both records, Venom's sophomore release Black Metal, which came out in 1982, and Bathory's debut, released two years later in 1984. The immediate similarity relates to the album art, with both records depicting the face of a satanic figure next to writing in the Old English fonts, all in black and white. The second common aspect pertains to the topic at hand here, the lovely Countess Bathory. The Venom track that was named after her is one of the band's most popular and famous songs, despite not being one of the album's singles. With the Bathory project founded a year after the record's release, most wonder whether Corthon named his project after the Venom song. On top of all this, further analyzing some of the lyrics and song titles reveal many intriguing similarities. Have a listen to Bathory's Raise the Dead track. And now let's listen to Venom's track, Buried Alive. Body 
Comparing only eight lines from each song reveals four instances of word-for-word -word identical lyrics. Granted, both tracks are about raising the dead from buried coffins, so it makes sense that there would be some lyrical overlap, but it's questionable whether this degree of similarity is a coincidence or not. But it doesn't stop there. Here's the end of Venom's Buried Alive, written to lead naturally into the following track on the record. So not only does Bathory's Raise the Dead track feature numerous identical lyrics to Venom's Buried Alive, it also features the same name as the track after Buried Alive on the Venom record. And this isn't even the only identical song title, as both records feature a track called Sacrifice. Looking at all these similarities as a whole, from the mirrored album art, color scheme, and identical lyrics and song titles, it's easy to understand why fans would have called Bathory a Venom clone. Well, Bathory frontman Corthon denied the whole thing, sparking one of the first controversies in black metal history. When asked about the issue in a 1987 interview, Corthon said, I don't think there are any similarities musically between Venom and Bathory at all, but I do think black metal, which I heard for the first time three months after we formed Bathory, is one of the best albums ever made because it has genuine feeling. Here, Corthon establishes that he only heard Venom three months after forming Bathory, which was still a year before Bathory's debut would release. However, Corthon would contradict himself in another interview about 15 years later, saying, I remember when Kerrang wrote after the release of our first album that we were only Venom clones, but we had actually never heard Venom at all, I heard Venom for the first time in late 1984 or early 1985. It's also odd how the frontman wants to distance himself so much from Venom, yet he also mentions that Black Metal is one of the best albums ever made. Keep in mind that, at the time of Bathory's formation, Corthon would have just been turning 18. So you're telling me that this young rocker kid, known for walking around adorned with black leather, bullet belts, and a chicken bone necklace, wouldn't be influenced by the band that pioneered this whole aesthetic? I have to stress again that bands that sounded remotely similar to Venom or what would be Bathory during this time period would have been few and far between, so Corthon hearing Venom for the first time, whenever that was, would have been monumental for the young artist. Given the overwhelming similarities present on the Venom and Bathory records, it's more likely that Corthon simply wanted to make Bathory's debut seem like more of an isolated feat in music history, despite the easy comparison. Unfortunately for the prideful Corthon, fans and interviewers wouldn't stop with the comparisons. As both Venom and Bathory grew in popularity and gained international record distribution, Bathory began receiving more and more fan mail asking if they were named after Venom's Countess Bathory track, as Bathory hadn't yet dedicated a song to the Countess lyrically. In response, the track Woman of Dark Desires would release on Bathory's 1987 record under the sign of the Black Mark. Here, Corthon continues to describe the perverted nature of Elizabeth Bathory's crimes, further cementing the historical figure into extreme metal music. Woman of Dark Desires also concludes in the same vein as Venom's track, detailing the Countess's demise, saying, No more beauty or life for eternity, cold walls entomb your secrets, but there's nothing you regret. Embrace death with a smile as the Highlands face sunset. Both tracks naturally have many similarities, such as the chorus's repetition of the Countess's name, further describing how she bathed in the blood of virgins and sadistically embraced death. However, Bathory seems to have successfully reclaimed notoriety here in their rivalry against Venom, as Under the Sign of the Black Mark is often considered the first full-on black metal album, helping to spark the subgenre's explosion in the early 1990s. Of course, both groups are cited as influential by later black metal acts like Dark Throne and Mayhem, but Bathory successfully founded the ultimate sound of the subgenre, while Venom never really pushed their sound past the level of a raucous metal-slash-punk fusion. Regardless of what is to be said by their rivalry, both bands successfully stamped the legend of Elizabeth Bathory into metal music history. 
The notoriety of both Venom and Bathory also revived interest in the legend of the Blood Countess, with new impressionable teens spinning these records for the first time every day, reading the blood-soaked lyrics and learning about the topic. I personally first heard about Countess Bathory when Kronos was screaming her name in one of Venom's most popular choruses. Today, the usage of the legend as musical inspiration is widespread in the metal genre, with bands named Countess, Countess Bathory, The Blood Countess, and many more influential groups writing songs about the legend, such as Ghost, Electric Wizard, Sun O, Slayer, Candlemas, and many more. However, the passing of time has cleared things up quite a bit, kind of popping this whole story's bubble. Firstly, just like how these metal music musicians carry reputations that make them seem a lot scarier than they actually are, the same is the case for the lovely Countess Bathory. As it turns out, she most likely didn't bathe in the blood of virgins to attain eternal youth, despite that aspect being sung about her the most. The first written record of Countess Bathory bathing in the blood of virgins actually popped up 200 years after the Countess's death, and was solely based on local legends that developed over time. Of the 300 witness testimonies, four of which were given by the Countess's accomplices while being tortured, not one mentions her bathing in anyone's blood to attain eternal youth. Additionally, the actual testimonies, which describe how Countess Bathory and her accomplices actually tortured victims inside the Chastitze castle, describe the Countess changing her shirt after each victim due to it being covered in blood, and also her ordering servants to clean blood off stone floors. If the Countess's goal was to fill up bathtubs of blood, she wouldn't have been so nonchalant about wasting it like this. Since then, this aspect has been the main selling point of Elizabeth Bathory's legend, even though it's most likely just a rumor. In similar fashion, the passing of time has also shed some light on the Bathory project and Corthon's incessant desire to make it seem completely isolated from Venom. Remember how Corthon kept switching the year in which he first heard Venom's black metal record, repeatedly denying any influence? Well, it turns out this may have been a complete lie. Before Bathory became a studio project solely spearheaded by Corthon, the group featured a handful of members shortly after forming, around the release of the band's debut. When interviewed about the subject in the book Bloodfire Death, The Swedish Metal Story, early Bathory drummer Jonas Akerlund recalls the band name being taken directly from Venom's Countess Bathory track. Now, going back to the numerous similarities between both records, if Corthon did take his project's name from the Venom track, it makes one question whether all of the other similarities were mere coincidences or if they were taken as well. Unfortunately, Corthon passed away in 2004, officially laying the Bathory project and the controversy to rest. Names and potential influence aside, both Venom and Bathory were and still are monumentally influential to the development of metal music, with both Venom's black metal and Bathory's debut pushing the extremity of the genre further than anyone else at the time. We can partially thank Elizabeth Bathory for inspiring these influential projects, giving them fodder for lyrical subject matter and even the namesake for Corthon's life work. Corthon did always joke about the gory inspiration, saying this when the Bathory project turned 20 years old in 2003. One may wonder if the old blood countess, wherever she may now be, do not rejoice over the victories won by her Scandinavian sons and celebrated Bathory's 20th anniversary by filling up a tub. Thanks for tuning in.